Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to old friends and hugely talented stars. Gary Wilmot, how are you? It's me. me. Is that me? Oh, yes, I'm fine, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, I looked in my little black book and there you are. So many times over the years I've spoken to you in Panto and in Chicago and here we are back in Nottingham where you're on tour with Oklahoma. And what I love about you is you've got those old ethics that you turn your hand to whatever's offered to you. And that gives such admiration from someone like me because so many people just do one thing and get on with it. But you really are an all-rounder aren't you uh, that might actually come from the, the way I started in this business in a thing called variety which of course doesn't exist anymore but um, so and I, I kind of still like variety now yeah I mean I look at a script when it's offered to me and uh, and I I like to think I, I don't mean this in a big-headed way but when I see a role I think I, I'll do that because I think I can do it better than anyone else can do it and that's my motivation really I don't mean that in a bragging way, but if I don't see that, then I, I will turn the roll down. But uh, I do like to think I'm going to do this better than anyone else. <laughs> and also, I have to say, you have amazing legs. You, when you're in a dress, you particularly have an appeal, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, the last time I saw you was in Birmingham, in Panto, and there you were. I mean, just killing it as the dame. And it's a tough role because if you're not good, the whole thing will flop. You really are the sort of glue that holds the thing together. And again, you're just able to muck around with it. Yeah, I, it's true. I'm no stranger to address. Um, <laughs> years, <laughs> only at weekends, folks. No, years ago, I, I did a, a program called uh, Copycats with some of the greatest impressionists in the country. And I wasn't one of the greatest impressionists in the country, but I could do about four or five really, really well. Uh, in Norman Wisdom, I think Stevie Wonder. Um, but there were six of us doing this show, six or eight, eight of us doing this show. And so we very quickly got through all of the impressions. So I found myself dressing up as, as women, like Bette Lynch or Rusty Lee, you know, j any of those uh, characters. And so, yeah, no strangers to wearing dresses, but uh, it's the character. If I think the character's great and fun, it doesn't really matter what they wear. Just a few weeks ago, I went to see a mate of mine, Dean Chisnell, who's playing Shrek at the moment on tour. And on a matinee day, he's in that face from sort of 11 o'clock in the morning through 11 o'clock at night. And I always say to him, it must be very strange when you turn and catch yourself in the mirror. I wonder on those two show days in Panto, what you think halfway through, do you sort of look at yourself and think, what am I doing to earn a living? Well, it's true. I mean, with Panto, <laughs> it takes so long to put the makeup on. I don't know how women do it in the car. I have no idea. <laughs> Uh, and on trains on the underground in London I've seen people put makeup on you kind of go how would you do that um, but uh, so I tend to keep on between the shows two shows every day as you, as you know and uh, so between the matinee and evening show but it, it, it's you forget you got it on sometimes I, it, the routine is I don't leave the theatre I mean I stay in the theatre so hopefully I'm in a theatre that's got facilities for eating and all the rest of it and sleeping so um, yeah it is It is quite strange I've done it with beards I've grown beards in the past for, for various roles but great big you, you know full on Brian Blessings and, uh, and it's funny when you shave them off it's very very odd uh, to see uh, to see your real face. <laughs> well, again, for our two hours in the theatre, it's magical and wonderful, but you've got to live with it, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, I do... It, it, when you grow a beard and you're not really used to it and you don't really like it, it's a, it's a bit of a pain, but it's, it's less of a pain than sticking one on every night when right. one's required, and uh, there's always the possibility of it, of it peeling off in the, minute, <laughs> the middle of an important speech. You don't want to do that, and then, of course, you leave Panto and you go straight into Oklahoma, which is a sensational production that I'm in to see tonight that's had wonderful reviews and I think the reason why it's got heart and people really love it don't they? Well the creative team were just superb uh, Rachel Kavanagh our director and particularly uh, uh, Drew Marconi who choreographed it's just breathtaking um, we must give a huge um, mention to our, our orchestra because they, they sound like the biggest universal studio orchestra you, you could ever under the baton uh, of uh, Steve Ridley and uh, they are just fantastic absolutely superb and they're a great asset but the casting of the show is brilliant the casting is just superb I've never seen a show where everyone is cast perfectly uh, our two lead, leads in this um, uh, Charlotte Wakefield and uh, Ashley Day they are just you couldn't wish for two better people to lead a company like this and a production like this I don't think the regions have ever had better shows than we've got at the moment. I just saw Bodyguard the other night, which is incredible. Wicked's on the road, which is this massive, phenomenally huge set. Um, we're really benefiting almost from the, the hard times in the West End. The, the people are having to come on tour who probably would have been there 10, 20 years ago. We're getting West End talent all over the UK. And that's quite right as well. Absolutely is. And, and don't think that the quality of touring shows isn't as good as it is in the West End. For me, I think the West End is the best in the world. Forget Broadway. The West End is theatre and musical theatre is just 
the best but they pick that up and they put it out on tour and it doesn't lose anything quality wise if they're doing their job right and they've certainly done their job right with Oklahoma it's true I've seen some very dodgy shows on the road I won't mention them but I've seen a few dodgy ones but I've seen a, a couple in the West End as well you know so they're just it shows that we're destined to not be particularly good I wonder whether it's my judgement sometimes because I own Saturdays well Friday through Saturday I saw three shows back to back one was Gypsy which is probably one of the greatest performances I've ever seen sure. from Imelda Staunton which is incredible. I saw another show which I thought was one of the most dreadful things that's been on for years. And again, the PA system was just dreadful. And you think, how do they get away with it? But people will decide. I do. It's not good for long-term theatre, though. Um, you, when you're a performer, just like if you're an artist or a, or a, a sculpt, sculptor, you, you, you want the very best materials. If you're building a house, you want the best, you want the best materials. And indeed, we, we require the best theatres, the best costumes. If you want to do your job properly you don't do it with a blunt chisel and uh, and I think it's really important to maintain the standard of touring theatre and indeed in the West End but just because a show is an old show or a revival it doesn't mean it can't be done brilliantly I uh, worked for Richard Eyre um, earlier on or last year I should say uh, on the pyjama game at Shaftesbury and that Shaftesbury Theatre and that show could not have been done better even though it was a show from the 50s it could not have been done better than, than they did with that I think it's really important it is, absolutely. What I love about you is you're a great actor, but I think I enjoy more your voice. I mean, you're a tremendous singer and you have that tone. I don't know what it is, but it's that thing that audiences find magnetic. When you wake up in the morning, are you sort of gargling with Listerine to try and get your voice going and then staying quiet all day? How tough is it maintaining your voice? Uh, it's not. <laughs> I don't, I don't I've, I'm very lucky I, when I say it's not tough I, there are times when um, I've, worked, I've been lucky enough to work with some great I've never had singing lessons but I've been lucky enough to work with some great uh, maestros and, uh, uh, but, and doing shows like Carmen Jones Henry Lewis who's sadly no longer with us was a tremendous help for that I went straight from me and my girl into, into Carmen Jones but you know all the singing is great and I do enjoy it very very much and, I, and I'm always at the, at the, uh, the warm ups and I do my own little singing during the day as well to keep the voice but when you're touring it's very very tough so you do have to be mindful of it you can't go out burning the candle at both ends every night but that's not difficult that's just making a choice and and I've got if I want to sing every night and do my job I've just got to not do certain things and that's what I do and I'm quite happy with that um, but m all of the musicals I've done have always been what are called book musicals and I've never done a sung through one like Phantom. I had the opportunity, but I chose not to do it because it's the acting parts that I, I really enjoy. Uh, they're the things that make it different every night. Singing the same notes and the same songs every night is one thing, but it's all the acting. The acting, the scenes are, are just different every single night. Do you pinch yourself when you look at your CV? I mean, it's one of the longest in show business. It's extraordinary how much you've done. I don't know whether it's because you always get fired enough to find a new gig, but no, really. I mean, over your career, so many shows, so many people you've worked with, it is extraordinary. It, it is. I've never totted them up, but there have been quite a number of West End shows. I did two last year and I did probably another dozen or more before that and uh, but you know the thing that does surprise me is it's been no um, surprise to a a any uh, people out there that I'm, I'm mixed race my father was from the Caribbean and that's what amazes me some of the stuff that I've done in musical theatre with the colour skin that I have um, uh, being black has been I've never had any kind of prejudice I don't think I don't know if I've never got a job because of that but I've played Fagan I've played uh, Bill Snibson an archetypal Cockney character from 1937 I've played Kips in, in um, Half a Sixpence, you know, the Tommy Steele role. To all intents and purposes, I was uh, uh, a Barry Manilow in Copacabana. And indeed, when I went into Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, I had two kids with blonde hair and blue eyes, and my, gra and my dad was Anton Rogers. Uh, and that's the big surprise to me. I've never consciously gone on about it, but I, you know, or, or even considered it. I just, you know, if I can do the job, I do it. And that's the big surprise to me. Do you know what's magnificent? You're not getting these gigs to tick a box or to make anybody happy. I love that you get them because you're great at what you do that's the ultimate testament isn't it you don't want to be a token gesture which I think frankly when you look at the BBC and places like that they do it all the time and it's not that helpful no it's not you're right and uh, the, the television generally has let down black performers I've never really stood on a soapbox I've, I've preferred to do my um, uh, canvassing stealth if you like and just getting on with the job and doing a good job and, and everybody at the end of it going my god well, look what he's done and uh, although that was never my aim but that seems to be what's happened 
happen now that all the dramas we have on television seem to be uh, the, the retrospective things you know like Downton Abbey uh, and uh, and Three Musketeers and lots of uh, and, I'm, and they're great dramas Poldark and all that they're doing great but I have to say that there isn't really enough for black and Asian uh, drama on television there really isn't enough and uh, you know I, I, there's not very little I can do about it now at the age I am but I, I if I carry a torch for anything it's that we need it's a very multicultural country that we live in and it's a brilliant country because of that uh, that doesn't seem to be reflected in television so much these days yeah and it's a shame especially when people are as good as you are oh, you. Um, this show Oklahoma is touring the UK how's life on the road it's got to be tiring but is it fun it's what I do yeah, I mean, I've always said if I could get 1500 people to come to my house every night I'd, <laughs> I'd work from home but sadly I don't have one of those kind of jobs <laughs> Nor a home big enough, or could you put in a few seats? Oh, I could fit 15,000 people in my... <laughs> Congratulations on this show. It's so warm, it's so wonderful, it's great, it's back, and it's been done well. What's the worst is when they bring these things back and they're done cheap. This isn't like that. No, not at all. It's fantastic. And um, I'm not saying this is the most uh, uh, expensive show ever put in, but the, everything that is there is right. It's correct. You know, it, there's nothing glitzy about it. It's just a really strong, dramatic production. And it's, uh, it surprises a lot of people how, how dark it is. A very dark, uh, dark piece. And, the, and it's, I <laughs> only realised today, it opens up, and it's my no mistake, I'm sure it opens up with a song called Oh, What a Beautiful Morning. Uh, and that's just really a precursor to all the tragedy and, and bullying and, and, uh, and death that, comes, that follows that. And again, a tremendous cast with exceptional talent. Great to talk to you as always. Thanks for your time. And Merry Christmas. <laughs>